Hello beautiful friends, I am here today with my second project for the Cut To You Design team for the month of October and as you can see it is another Halloween themed layout. In the interest of full disclosure I had actually made a completed layout using this same photo and this same collection, filmed it, recorded it, done everything with it but then I was so unhappy with the finished layout that for the first time ever in my scrapbooking career, my scrapbooking life, I pulled the layout apart because I just it just really wasn't working for me. So I pulled it apart, I sat down, I had a bit of a think, I planned it out a little bit more and I am ready to go again and I am hoping that this one comes together much better and that I'm much happier with it. So what I am working with is this photo of my kids which was taken on Halloween last year, 2020. Uh, my daughter turned five a few days beforehand and she really wanted to have a Halloween or Nightmare Before Christmas themed birthday party and it just so happened that I was at one of our local chain big chain department stores and they had a whole bunch of Nightmare Before Christmas stuff out ready for Halloween so I managed to get a Sally costume for Violet and a Jack Skellington costume for Jack and it was just so great I really loved it. Um, I am working with the Crate Paper Hay Pumpkin collection, which I have a fair bit of this. I've also got some embellishments off, which I don't have here on my desk right now, but I'll be using this collection. And the cut file that I'm using from cut to You, it's actually the Halloween one. Now, the Halloween one um, cut file actually comes in two pieces. There's this standalone sort of half web piece, and then there is another piece which has a full-size web and the word boo repeated four times down the side of it but I didn't want to use that boo section so all I cut from some nice thick black basil heavyweight cardstock is just that top half web and if I get it a little bit closer you can see that I have gone through and added some stitching detail just to the straight lines here and I've used a really dark gray thread I didn't want it to stand out too much but I wanted to have a little bit of contrast between the stitching and the cut file Okay, so I think that's it by way of introduction. Let's hop on fast forward and see this one come together. Okay, so to begin with, I am going to create the base or the background for my page. I'm starting off with a piece of white cardstock. This is Basil White, which I love. It's more of a, um, it's a warmer white cardstock, but they recently changed their production. So they don't actually make the, the the tone of their white cardstock isn't the same anymore and I've only got about I think 15 or so sheets left so I'm really sad to see the end of this one coming very soon because it's my preference to use a warmer white cardstock but off on that little tangent um, I have trimmed that cardstock down to about 11 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches I've also chosen a pattern paper from the hay pumpkin paper pad and I went with this dark background it's a black with a it's a black on black so it's tone on tone um, black with darker black polka dots on it and then I will be adding some stitching detail to the border but before I did that I wanted to distress the edges of that white background paper so I have used my distressing tool and I've also torn um, a couple of pieces or torn some little notches in a couple of pieces because I really wanted to give the background a really rough and distressed look to it so off camera I'll take that off to my sewing machine and then I'm just quickly showing you here I've used some black thread and I've double stitched the border where I had those little torn pieces I ran my sewing machine up to the edge and then skipped over the torn piece and started again on the other side then I just trimmed those threads um, on the front and taped them down on the back and that's how I have the look of the, um, the missing thread on those torn pieces so what I'm what I'm using now this is a homemade stencil that I have made I didn't have anything in my stash that suited what I was looking for and I didn't really want to go and buy something I have saved this template now I actually very painstakingly created this myself in my silhouette studio software so I found just a plain star uh, shape and a dot shape and I have just copied and pasted them multiple times 
uh, into the template that I've created is actually a full circle but for this I only used half of it so I've cut a semicircle so it's some stars and some dots they're different sizes it's a really random scattering I've cut it out onto some plain white cardstock using my silhouette and then I'm using it as a stencil for some ink blending and I've chosen three different colors of distress oxide one is spiced marmalade I think the other one is crackling campfire and then um, pumice stone I think is the third one that I used uh, so it's given me a fairly subtle detail and that's going to sit behind the cobweb um, cut file that I have uh, cut out and stitched through just cleaning off my brushes a little bit there I'm never really too sure how to clean these brushes off but for now I'm just using I've got a little baby wipe and I'm just rubbing them against the baby wipe to get most of the color off I do have some more of those on the way so that I can color code them and make it a little bit easier for me to avoid um, blending colors inadvertently I'm also coming in now and adding some silver splatters over the top I'm using a Liquitex silver acrylic ink I started off splattering it on my paintbrush and then I realized that I wanted some much bigger um, chunkier splatters so what I'm doing is I'm just dipping my paintbrush in and then I'm holding it vertically above the page so not sitting horizontally and I'm just kind of throwing the splotches down and that's giving me some much bigger um, splats of silver paint and off camera I did also go in and add some black splatters as well and to do that I have a little pot that I have created my own kind of acrylic ink I just squished uh, squeezed some black acrylic paint into a little glass pot added enough water to make it um, good a good consistency for splattering and then I just keep that and I use that when I need to so I have added a white cardstock, plain white cardstock background to my photo. This is just a really inexpensive white cardstock that I pick up from Spotlight here in Australia. Um, I've added a really thin uh, photo mat to the back of that one. And then I'm going to add a couple of layers behind the photo. The first one is going to be this orange patterned paper with stars on it. And rather than, the reason I didn't stick the photo down or adhere the photo down and first was because I knew that I wanted to add some black stitching around the border so I measured out my photo and then added I think about a half an inch to um, the dimensions so it gives me about a quarter of an inch either side and then I've grabbed my sewing machine here and I'm just quickly adding in just a single line of black stitching around the border of that piece uh, what I like to do with all of my stitching is flip it over pull the top thread through to the back and then just use some tape to secure it down at the back and trim off the excess and that keeps my thread nice and secure nothing's going to come up now I'm going to pop the photo down it's not quite even I do have a little bit more on the top and bottom than I do on the sides but that's okay I'm happy with that just distressing the edge a little bit and then I'm going to come in with my second photo mat which is this same black patterned paper that I've used to mat my whole page on so I'm going to adhere that down I'm leaving a slightly thicker border I had an idea of making it kind of look a little bit like an old school photo um, so I've got with this creative memories trimmer that's pretty new to me one of the things that I purchased when I bought it was the decal blade so you can see that when I've trimmed that out it has given me a much more interesting cut it's not a straight cut it's a deckled edge cut which for me made it look a little bit more like a vintage old school kind of photo which was a um, an aesthetic that I thought would work really well with this particular layout now my journaling as I mentioned at the beginning of this video this is actually the second attempt at creating this page the first one I just was so unhappy with how it ended up that I pulled it all apart I saved some of the pieces and one of the pieces that I saved was my journaling so I had created the journaling onto a tag and this tag I um, is one of the digitals from the Hey Pumpkin collection and I printed it out and then added some journaling to it 
And in the original layout, which I've decided to keep for this redo, I had the tags hidden behind the photo. So it's a bit of a, a pull tab, pull out journaling. Uh, I don't know that I've really done much of this kind of thing before. So for me, it was a little bit clunky kind of figuring out the mechanics of it. It's one of those things that my brain just doesn't really do all that well. I can, there's lots of things that my brain does really well, sometimes too well, but figuring out the mechanics of things like this, it's, I think because it's a little bit more abstract, it relies a little bit more on spatial awareness and spatial knowledge and those things just aren't really my forte. Um, so it's a bit clunky, my process, but essentially what I've done is I've added a longer tab to the bottom of that tag and that is going to be used to stop the tag from being able to be pulled all the way up from behind the back of the photo. So those pieces there will catch on the tape, that you, the tiny little pieces of tape that you saw me adhere down to the top. And then I'm also adding some tape at the bottom of where I want the tag to go again so that it doesn't fall all the way down and disappear behind the photo. And then also on either side, and then I've added some white cardstock. So it's created a little pocket for that tag, but the pocket has been designed so that the tag can't slip down too far and it also can't be pulled up all the way. And that was achieved just by using some, some tape uh, adhered to the uh, cardstock. For some added texture and again, sticking with that kind of vintage not super spooky, but that vintage, um, like gothic, I guess, feel. I have bought, I purchased at, again, at Spotlight, I purchased just some um, small pieces of different laces that I knew that I wanted to use in my documenting for Halloween. This is a black applique, applique, I think that's the right term, lace. I've just trimmed a bit down and then I am really struggling with this um, 450 Helmars 450 glue. I always, always, always struggle to get it out of the bottle, but I wanted to make sure that I had a good amount of that glue on the back there because I, because it is so textural, this lace, I really wanted to make sure that it was going to stick down well. So I've added the 450 glue behind and then I've just really roughly, I've scrunched up some of the pieces and I've just really roughly placed that behind on the photo. And then I'm going to pop it to the side to dry a little bit while I work on my background some more. So to start creating a little bit of a shelf, I've grabbed out some washi tapes. I've picked three different washi tapes, uh, all kind of Halloween themed. I've got this black vertical stripe tape. I have got this white and black cobweb tape and I have got an orange, I think it's a chevron. It's Yeah, it's like a, uh, no, it's not a chevron. Is that, is that? Oh, I can't think of what it's called. I've got this orange washi tape that's going to sit in between the two of them. So I'm popping that up the top of the mixed media background stenciling that I've done. And then I'm going to adhere the cobweb cut file down um, directly underneath that. So that kind of helps to create a little bit of a shelf, a bit of a grounding, and that's where the cobweb is going to fall down from. And it's also where the photo is going to, to sit on. I intentionally chose to have it on an angle, to place it on an angle rather than having it uh, straight across horizontal, to, rather than having it lined up straight horizontally. That was intentional. I, I, I thought it would add a little bit more visual interest to the page. In the end, I'm not sure that it works the way that I really envisaged it would work, but it's not terrible. It's just not, perhaps it's because my mind is is quite linear and it's I, I do I am a bit of a perfectionist when it comes to straight lines so perhaps it's just that it's a little bit outside of my comfort zone I am used to having things straight vertically and horizontally so putting something on a little bit of an angle is not what my brain is used to seeing in my own creative projects but I'd love to know what you think down in the comments um, do you think that having it on an angle does it work or is it are you like me? Are you a bit like, mm, not quite, not quite sure. So I have added some double-sided foam to the back of my photo. 
uh, and the lace and now I'm using some a nice a decent amount of adhesive and I'm going to stick that down that I am going to make sure that it is straight up and down because although my cobweb is diagonal I didn't want my photo to be diagonal so as I'm working I'm holding that photo down just trying to give the adhesive some time to to stick and to dry a little bit and I realized that it wasn't really working so I and I wanted to get on with sorting out my embellishments so I grabbed just a piece of a plain white paper that I had sitting by popped that on top and then used the weight of my phone to hold that down just while the adhesive starts to dry and hold that photo in place and now we have come to the embellishing which if you have watched any of my previous videos you'll know this is the part of the process which I enjoy the most but it's also the part that frustrates me the most and it's the part that takes me the longest I have a real tendency to overthink and second guess my placements and I tried not to do that when I was creating this layout because I had had such a hard time with the first version I wanted to try and just keep it a little bit simpler not go too crazy with the embellishments just build my two little clusters to the left and the right of the photo and I did end up creating just a really small cluster up to the top left of the page and that was really just for balance because um, there was a lot of uh, empty space up there in the top left of the layout and the left hand sorry the right hand side and the bottom of the layout is is really quite visually heavy so having just a little embellishment up in that top left corner helps to balance that out a little bit so I just roughly placed a few embellishments around where I thought they would go well and I was happy enough with how they looked so I'm going to come straight in and start doing start to adhere them down some of these pieces are from the ephemera pack actually I think one of these pieces maybe just the it may just be the skeleton I think he's the only piece from the embellishment pack uh, ephemera pack and he was salvaged from the previous layout he was on the previous layout and he's got a lot of um, picked off glue on the back of him now I did add a an eyelet to the hole at the top of his head uh, and then I've just added some uh, orange and white and black twine through that and as usual, I'm using some foam adhesive behind parts of my embellishments just to bring parts of them off the page, give add a little bit of depth and a little bit more visual interest to those embellishment clusters. Over to the left in the little embellishment cluster there, you can sort of see a piece of ribbon. So for that, I just grabbed a black paper clip and a piece of a, like a pale orange ribbon and I stuck the ribbon through the top of the paper clip and then just ran it through my sewing machine a couple of times with a black thread just it was something different a little bit of a DIY embellishment just again trying to think of different ways of bringing in different textures different elements and keep that visual interest there on the page this little piece here a little bit scary was cut from one of the pattern papers one of the cut apart sheets i distressed the edge of it and i really wanted to add i really really wanted to make this work on the page but i just just couldn't find anywhere that it would go and not sort of get lost or confused so i'm going to play around moving it around a few times but in the end it doesn't actually make it onto the final layer I left it there for a little while just to see if I was happy with it and actually looking back on it now on the video it's it's not that bad right there it's it, it could have actually served as a title rather than that big happy Halloween piece um, but yeah it doesn't make it on so now I'm going to create this little cluster at the top left and this is where I'm going to add my date the October word that you can see again it was cut from fussy cut from one of the cut apart sheets in the pattern paper and I, it, it actually said October 31, but I cut the 31 off because I'm using these silver glitter uh, chipboard pieces from the chipboard sheet. And because they were on the previous layout, they had no adhesive on the back of them. So I'm just using my wet glue to adhere those down. And again, thinking about balance, because I've got that silver 
glitter up the top there I wanted to bring it in down to the clusters around side my photo so I had these two little silver glitter stars and I'm popping those just nestling them in tucking them in into some little spots amongst my two embellishment clusters so I had the date there October 31 but I didn't have the year so to add the year I just grabbed a date stamp a rolling date stamp and that same pumice stone distress oxide ink which is a really soft gray and I've just repeat stamped that a few times there and then to tie that cluster in with the rest of the elements on the layout I have added a little bow using that same orange twine that is hanging out at the top of the little skeleton and for some little finishing off pieces I grabbed this stamp set which had a few different elements and I've picked up the bat and using that same grey distress oxide I've stamped a couple of bats in around those clusters. I'm going to add a few pieces from the sticker book. These are some dark, some black glitter stars. I'll tuck those in and then off camera I also come in and add some Nouveau drops scattered around. So that is it for this layout. We got there much happier with the way this one looks. So this one is a keeper. Of course, I have some close up photos coming in just a moment and you'll find all the links that you need for this cut file as well as the cut to you store down in the description box below. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.